G'day everyone and welcome to the first episode of me building my model railway. And what I intend to do with this series is take you on, well, my journey in building a model railway. Now this is not going to be how to videos, it's just going to be what I'm doing and how I did it and things like that. I, I don't want it to be instructional, I just want it to be pretty casual. So if that sounds like a good idea to you, don't forget to subscribe and have notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any videos coming out soon. So let's get into it. So after much deliberation, I've decided to actually get started on a model railway. Uh, I get a lot of messages on my Instagram about when I'm starting it and well, here we are. So what are we doing? I guess a little bit of a backstory. So the room that this layout is going into is in a rental property. I'm a millennial, I don't own my own home. So I can't build a giant permanent room with all that kind of good stuff. That's why I'm in a model railway club. So I've got room to you know, run huge trains and all that kind of good stuff. But at home, I'm looking to build, well, something for this, for YouTube and myself. So I need to build something that is nice and open so I can get good run by shots and close up shots and things like that, as well as having some switching and having a grade. So the room I'm in is an office. Well, it's a spare bedroom, but we use as an office. And because of that, I can't run the layout around the entire room. So what I've got is a bit of a U shape going on uh, just around the back half of the room. Now, what I'm kind of stuck with is what to do with it. What I'm thinking, now, if you actually, just to backtrack one second, if you've watched or listened to my interview with Dazzy J over at Model Railroad Techniques, I say in it that I was thinking about building a layout that would replicate something like the Melbourne to Adelaide line, like a, a fictional station in between there. I, that's not gonna happen. Um, I think in my mind at the time, I thought I'd be able to put two loops at either end, but the amount of room that would take up is enormous and then the room just becomes unusable. So what I've decided to go with is, or what I'm thinking I'm gonna go with, is something based on maybe a fictional spot somewhere on the outer Melbourne suburban network. Now, quick backstory, I live in Melbourne, I have lived in Victoria my entire life and I collect mainly Victorian railways, a little bit of South Australian, a little bit of New South Wales stuff, but mainly Victorian. And what I'm thinking is a single track main line that will come up from a staging area that will be located just behind me, which will come up a grade into a station area, a terminus station, and then you will also have some, an industry, haven't decided what, on probably both ends. So train comes in, can switch out a load, can move it all around, and it gives me something to do, gives me those switching game kind of ideas and it also gives me a layout that I can use for these kind of videos when I wanna make locomotive reviews, carriage reviews, product reviews, things like that. Plus it'll be a nice thing to have in the background of my monthly news videos. So the kind of station or area I'm thinking of building is like on the Lilydale or the Upfield line where you used to have suburban freight trains as well as passenger trains, specials, all that kind of good stuff. So it'll be not huge trains, it won't be two NRs pulling my Indian Pacific set around. It'll be small, probably hood locos pulling a handful of, you know, GY wagons. And now that the Tates are coming, I'm leaning more and closer and closer to pulling the trigger on a set and that kind of thing. So just shorter trains, I think it'll work. Now, like I said, it's gonna have a grade, um, which will come up behind me from a staging area and we'll have an industry here. So I've got this. This is a Woodland Scenics 3% incline decline set. Now I picked this up from Train World in Brighton for $47.30. Um, this has preformed risers in it. And yeah, we'll have that go up there. So that'll be good for testing locomotives to see what they can haul up a grade. Uh, yeah, into what'll hopefully be a stationary, just nice and open, not too cluttered and dense with things. Something trying to at least look a little prototypical. Now, that's what I'm thinking. And because it doesn't really matter just yet, I don't have to worry about track plans and things like that. So that'll come in, in probably the next video. 
But this weekend in Melbourne, we have a long weekend. Not by choice, but here we are. So I thought I'd make the most of it and start this video series. So what I've done so far, I have bench work. Bench work is done. The bench work, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a woodworker, I'm not a tradie. I sell cameras for a living. I bought some modular bench work from Ikea. Now I bought the Ivar modular benches. I bought one that's about 60 centimeters deep and I bought four which are 30 centimeters deep. They just bolt together, really, really simple. Now I know that's not the most cost effective way to build bench work, but it was the easiest way for me to build bench work. So I've got that. So when I move, it'll all just pack down. I'm assuming we're gonna be here for a while. So it's not, you know, this is only like, it's not semi-permanent, it's not even, but it's not also not like an exhibition layout, which is built to travel with. Now, the reason I didn't go with that is because I didn't wanna make it hard on myself. I just wanted to make something easy, get myself going and have a nice little layout at home. So that's the, the basis of the bench work. On top of the benches, I have foam board. Now this is extruded uh, foam, insulation foam, that you can get from Bunnings. The reason I went with this as what goes on top, a couple of reasons. Uh, big fan of Ken Patterson over at Ken Patterson, his YouTube channel, which if you haven't checked it out, it's definitely worth watching. And his monthly show, Model Railroad, from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And he uses foam board. It's easy to work with. It's lightweight and it's pretty cost effective um, and it's easily manipulated. So I bought these in like big sheets and I bought a hot wire foam cutter from Amazon, which cost me I think about 40 bucks and it's been good. I just have to measure it, cut it and it sits on it. Um, now, cause I went with these, these modular benches, they do have some little notches I had to cut out. They just, it just cuts out. It's really, really easy to work with. It'll also, think helps sound deaden any locomotives running around, at least that noise you get when they're running on just wood, hopefully. Now, currently behind me, I've got some of the pieces gluing together. Um, they won't be glued to the bench. They're just gonna sit on it. They seem to sit flat. Going off what Ken says, they shouldn't warp. I mean, at least in the time that I have them here, because I realize that one day I'll move and this whole thing will probably get ripped up and recycled into another layout. That's, that's future me's problem. But for right now, this seems like the easiest thing to go with. So I've got them gluing together. I used Gorilla Glue. Pro tip, use gloves. Put gloves on, don't get this stuff on your hands. It won't come off for ages. And anything that it does get on, it's going to stick and bond to. It's great. Um, so they're all just pushed together, glued. They're currently braced. Um, I've already done a couple of other ones. Just a light bit of sanding over the top where any glues come over the the top. So once all that's down, um, I've put an order into my local Bunnings, which hopefully I can pick up tomorrow. And that's where we'll pick this back up all in this one episode. So I guess that part doesn't matter to you, but um, I got some pine board and this will be popped onto the front as a fascia. So I don't have this green foam just sitting there and it'll look nice in the background of my videos. And once that, I think I should just be able to glue it on there. Um, it seems that that should work. So once that's glued on there, um, that's the front done, that's the fascia done, that's the bench work done. Pretty easy. I also hopefully should have the incline done tomorrow or at least over this weekend. And once I've got that done, I'll probably lay a piece of track and run a train. I suppose that's a pretty good idea. Um, at least that's the goal for this weekend, long weekend could be longer, who knows? I suppose we do know by the time you're watching this. Anyway, so yeah, how's that sound? I reckon that sounds pretty good. So, we'll get into it. All right, so it's been a couple of days and I've got all the bench work done. So now we've got the foam board, which has been glued and sanded together. I've got the fascia on, which is just pine board, which has been I guess filled. I don't know if I'm going to stain it. It really doesn't bother me too much at this point Probably because it's gonna get dirty. I don't know. But yeah, that's all together now All of this actually lifts up. So when I go to do wiring, I can just cut the foam board sink the wires in and we're good to go Apart from that, it's all come together pretty well So you've now seen an overview of the room what we've got in terms of 
what I've got to work with. And yeah, it's, it's exciting. Um, I can run a train from what will be the staging area up into the back here, which is what I'll leave you with right at the end of this video. And yeah, awesome. Now where I'm stuck is actually gonna be track plan. Now, I know I want a couple of things. Over on one side where I've got, I guess, the Long Island kind of bit there, I'm gonna go with a grain silo. It's a bit generic, but it is an Australian layout. So grain haulage, especially in Victoria, pretty, pretty popular. And there are different eras of grain wagons, and I've got quite a lot of them. So that's gonna be a nice big grain silo. And we'll go with that. Um, over the other side, I think I would do want another industry. I have no idea what. I wouldn't mind cement, just because with suburban layouts like Dandenong or Brooklyn, you have a short line, which will have just a single track into a cement yard and a run around. Now, I don't quite have the room on that side, so I'm not quite set in stone about what I want, but I already have um, this, which is a Walther's, uh, the Medusa, um, cement plant, which I built some time ago. This is all good. This needs a little bit of work, but that's part of the fun. I mean, it's not doing anything. It can, it might go there. Um, I did order a grain elevator silo kit from Train World, which should arrive probably today, um, but that doesn't mean too much to you guys. That's something that'll come in the next video. W what I've got to decide is what's gonna go back here. Now, I thought about having the single line come up into a station, so I can have passenger services, just a terminus, or maybe the end can just be blacked off that, you know, if this ever goes somewhere else, I can use it again. I don't know. Um, and I, cause I kind of want overhead wires simply so I can have Tate's or Comeng if that ever comes, Harris, the electric E classes, L classes, stuff like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. But am I overreaching? And I think that's part of the problem. If I don't have that, I can just have this as a yard and you just have trains come in, with mixed loads, they can get sorted and go back out. Um, I've seen quite a few layouts like that and I quite like them, but it kind of, I feel that I might be a bit limited. So that's why I'm gonna put this question to everyone watching. What should I do? What should I do with this center part? Should I have a terminus station, trains can come in, set back, run back down into the staging yard, then have a small staging yard in the front here, or just have the whole thing as yard? I'm not sure. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. So I guess that's it for part one of me building this little layout. So if you do have any thoughts, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback and suggestions and tips and things like that. And if you think this is a good little series to keep on with, just nice and casual, nice and informal. Don't wanna make it anything more than that. Um, oh yeah, I also put lights in. Someone um, asked me, if I could lighten the background of my monthly news videos, I've put lights in this area. It's just an old LED strip lighting. So hopefully the backgrounds of the monthly news videos are a bit brighter. But anyway, I digress. If you do like the video, of course hit like. If you haven't already, subscribe. That helps out the channel more than you can believe. And uh, I now have Patreon as well. If you really feel like supporting the channel, you have that as an option as well. You don't have to, it's just there. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with another episode probably pretty soon because this long weekend has turned into quite a long weekend. Anyway, hooroo.